Hello everyone, welcome to the video, and today we're going to be talking about how to get better at mouse and keyboard. So, I was a controller player all my life. I just recently switched, and this is me about a month in, and I gotta say it was very, very difficult for me to switch, I wanted to quit multiple times, um, but as for me on controller and my gaming progress on controller, I was high ranked in every game i ever played i was peak number four pred on apex legends and i was number one on na but i believe and then i was gm in overwatch one and i was i was pretty much top rank in almost every game i ever played on controller however when i switched i knew what i needed to do but i just wasn't able to perform the actions and it was very frustrating and it made me want to quit multiple times but one of the main things I can give you guys as a tip would be that it just takes a lot of consistent practice and there's really no way around that. There's no get good at MNK fast, although I do believe that after just a month time, my progress has been pretty amazing. So you can do it relatively quickly, but you still have to put in a massive amounts of work. It's not something that's just going to be easy. I'm going to also preface this video by saying that I had literally zero experience on mouse and keyboard before this month. I was absolutely terrible at it. I couldn't even like move and shoot. It was very, very bad. So I promise you guys your starting point cannot possibly be much worse than mine because I still kind of have to look at the keyboard when I type. It's pretty embarrassing. But regardless, the first tip we're going to get into is your hardware. So hardware is a very important part of getting good at mouse and keyboard because you are going to need a solid mouse, a good mouse pad, and a lot of room. It's also recommended that you have a decent monitor. Right now I'm playing on a 144Hz monitor, or it might be a 165Hz monitor, I'm not entirely sure, but regardless, you are going to need um, decent frames. You're, you're definitely not going to want to be on 60 frames. If you have to be, it's fine. It's not going to totally hinder your performance. It's just something that you can get out of the way early. Another thing is a good mouse and a wireless mouse. I, I would like to give you guys recommendations, but honestly, I'm not entirely versed in in like the the hardware section right now i am using a uh, glorious model o and it is wired which i would recommend you not do uh, right now it's it's kind of sluggish and my mouse pad's pretty bad so overall i i need to upgrade my hardware too but it's a decent start i have a decent amount of room i have a pretty pretty solid size mouse pad although i definitely want to get like the biggest mouse pad you could possibly have because i need even more space and I want to upgrade to a wireless mouse. Your keyboard doesn't entirely matter. Obviously, you want to get a good one. I have the, um, I think it's the Ducky Maya Varmillo or something like that. It's the C Melody. I'm not entirely sure what the company is, but it is called the C Melody. And um, that's my hardware. I would definitely recommend you guys get, you know, at least a, a decent base start with a wireless mouse and, and, and a lot of room. One of the main problems I was running into was not having enough room. And I wasn't really good at recentering my mouse, so I, I just kind of ran into things. I ran into my keyboard, I ran into my monitor. So the next thing we're going to talk about is a setting that you guys actually need to swap. And that is going to be in the mouse settings on your actual PC. So you go here, and then what you're going to do is just deselect this enhanced mouse pointer speed. You definitely do not want that on. Um, I was playing with that on for like a week and I had no idea that it was really really bad So you're definitely going to want to turn that off and so with that out of the way It's pretty much down to just practice So one of the main ways that I have practiced a lot is Kovacs so you guys can get aim trainer or aim labs I believe it's called um, Because it's free, but I've been using Kovacs just because they have this benchmark system and on this benchmark system Which I'm going to be showing you guys some screenshots of right now just to show you guys my progress um, the benchmark system has been very helpful for me to just track and gauge where I'm at. Uh, it could be very discouraging when you're looking at leaderboards, so I kind of advise that you don't do that. However, when I put a rank next to it, it, it made it a lot easier because I believe in, in most of my placements for these benchmarks, I was like bronze and silver. I didn't even have a single gold. And throughout um, practicing and getting better at all of these drills, I was able to get all the way up to GM eventually. And I just did that after like a month of progress just today. And I was very, very happy about it. So this is really nice to have as a guideline because when you look at Kovacs, you know, you might be at like the lower, you might be at the bottom like 20%. Right, but the only people that are using Kovacs are people that are very passionate about getting better. So you are essentially in the in the bottom 20% of like the top 10% of people that actually want to get their aim better. So 
you know when you have these very very driven people of course your your scores aren't really going to line up immediately so you don't want to look at that and that's why i really like the benchmarks because they give you a raw score it's like bronze silver gold platinum diamond master grandmaster and you can kind of see where your aim is at um the way i kind of lined it up was i i i'm very familiar with apex legends so i just kind of went off of what my aim is i'm bronze and silver on all these drills so my aim is bronze and silver and now i believe that i'm like a diamond one in terms of aim but i still want to get it much much better so i would definitely recommend that you guys get kovacs you can literally just get the same results from aim labs i'm just saying what has helped me out a lot and kept me motivated for actually being able to see the progress that i've been doing and it, it definitely helped me out personally but you could do the same stuff with aim labs and the final tip i have for you guys is to get comfortable with one sensitivity and don't change it so a lot of times people will go into pro streams and they'll look at they'll, they'll ask the sense setting and they'll just jump around a million times but that's really not working for you you want to kind of build up the muscle memory so for me i prefer a slow sense and most pros play on slow sense i play on a slow sense because i like to use my entire arm when i'm aiming and not just my wrist because of um, the potential health problems down the line. If you do use your wrist, you can develop carpal tunnel and things like that. So I wanted to avoid that. And I feel like I have more control whenever I'm on a lower sense and moving my entire arm and wrist for precise movements. You kind of want to use a hybrid of that, but finding a nice sense is, is very, very important. And then you just want to transfer it from game to game. So for me in Overwatch, I play on a, I think I'm on 800 DPI and a 5% sense. And for Apex, I'm on like a 1.5 and they, they match together pretty well. So those are my tips for learning mouse and keyboard. I really hope this helps you guys and I wish you nothing but luck in your journey to get better. Uh, make sure you guys stay consistent with it and practice. And I promise you that you will see results. It just takes some time. So that's pretty much it for today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.